Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In the last couple of tutorials, we talked about loss functions and optimizers. And in this tutorial, let's talk about metrics that we use in deep learning. Again, I'm not going to cover a lot of metrics, but the most common ones that we use. And when I say metrics, this is exactly what I mean. When you do model.compile, loss optimizer is what we covered in the last two tutorials and today in this video i'm going to talk about metrics okay and in this example we're using accuracy now it's it's self-evident that's why this will be a rather short video but uh, in keras especially if you're using this it allows to monitor certain metrics okay as we are training the model now metrics are recorded after each epoch uh, uh, during the training process and uh, loss function can also be used as a metric. For example, for regression problems, you can use mean squared error or mean squared logarithmic error, one of these, and that can also be a metric, okay? Because you're, after all, using a loss function or trying to minimize the loss function. So by monitoring loss function, uh, you can actually uh, use that as one of your metrics, okay? Now, if you use a validation data set, for example, if you have a training data set and a validation data set, then whatever the metric, like accuracy, for example, can be calculated for both of these. So you can see, are you overfitting? Because if the accuracy is very high for your training data set, but low for validation, that means you're kind of overfitting your, uh, your model. Uh, so then you can take appropriate actions, okay? Now, uh, some of the metrics, again, I listed out here, regression metrics. Uh, and, and in the parenthesis here, this is how you kind of uh, define it as part of your uh, Keras model.compile. Uh, MSC for mean squared error, mean absolute error, absolute percentage error, and most of these are self-evident. Uh, cosine proximity, mean squared, and uh, although I should mention for most regression metrics, it's uh, MSC that's commonly used. Now, classification metrics, I didn't put anything in the parenthesis because that would make my slide very uh, uh, or that would make the font very small, but uh, think of binary accuracy. The way you define that uh, in your model.compile is just binary underscore accuracy, all lowercase, okay? So binary categorical accuracy, spark and uh, sparse and so on. And to be frank with you, most of the time I have defined it just by typing accuracy, just like I did right here, okay? And this is a built-in function that's commonly used uh, in Keras especially. Now, I would like to show you a few lines of code applying both, uh, for example, mean squared error. Uh, uh, actually, let's plot a few of these and also for classification uh, metrics, okay? So let's uh, jump into our spider IDE and here is a few lines of code. Now, so this part, I'm trying to demonstrate the regression metrics. Uh, and all I'm doing is just a very simple straight line. Uh, create an array of values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10. That's it. This is my input data. If you want, you can just test it on any type of uh, values. And then my model is basically is I'm using sequential method to add my model. And the first layer is dense. And the second layer is also dense uh, with a value of 1 because it's just outputting a single uh, value. Okay. And I'm compiling this using a mean squared error, again, a regression type of problem. So mean squared error, my optimizer is Adam. We talked about what it is again in the last tutorial. And the metrics to monitor, you can give multiple, by the way. So I'm defining them as MSC, MAE, MAPE, and so on. And, uh, and then we are just doing model.fit. In the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about what our batch size means, okay? So let's save that for now. But you probably know what epochs is. Again, I'm going to talk about it uh, pretty soon in the next tutorial. But this is basically the number of times you're actually doing this, uh, 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 going through all of the data, at least once forward and once backward in your uh, backprop, if it is a backpropagation. Uh, so, uh, and we are just doing uh, fitting x to x itself, okay? The same uh, data. And then I'm just plotting uh, mean squared error and everything. Remember, here I'm just giving these as MSC, but I'm printing this as mean squared error. Now, I believe if you use uh, uh, a newer version of Python, then it may throw some error saying that, hey, mean squared error, you never told me what it is, then change this to MSC, okay? Uh, just giving you a heads up. Okay, let's go ahead and plot all of these. 
So now, how many epochs did we say? 500 epochs, so this should actually go through all of these 500 epochs. It's just a very simple data set. And here I should have added uh, a label, but the first, uh, the green one is, uh, I thought I added a label, sorry about that. The green one is uh, your mean squared error or plot one at a time. I'm absolutely sorry about just uh, doing this one. So let's go ahead and plot this one first. You see, this is your mean squared error and mean absolute error. It, it shows up in the same color is this one. So it's actually along the same lines. Mean squared error, uh, error is up here. Now, what am I trying to prove by showing you this? Nothing right now. Put real data. I'll share this code. Go ahead and change your x to whatever your real x value is. And then just uh, keep track of these metrics and see how these metrics uh, kind of compare to e each other. Okay, so that's the point over there. And now this bottom part, uh, again, I got this code just by browsing, reading some blogs uh, in terms of generating this synthetic code. So here, for the classification problem, I do not want to use a simple, you know, like X and Y. I can, but uh, in this case, I'm actually generating some artificial data by using scikit-learn's make blobs data sets. Okay? With this, you can actually tell how many samples you want and how many clusters or centers around which uh, you're generating these and how many features and what is the cluster uh, standard deviation. So by keeping a lower standard deviation, all of these clusters are kind of overlapping, making this a challenging problem, which is okay. Again, a good way of testing these things. Uh, so let me comment this part out. I just wanted to, I wrote these extra lines to show you how it looks like, but this is the actual part of the code we are trying to use which is basically the same thing except I'm uh, encoding or one hot encoding our Y values to categorical Y. Why? Again, because we need to convert them from integers to some sort of a labels uh, or binary classes. So that's what I'm trying to use this. And uh, model, again, keep it very simple. I'm using dense layers uh, of 50 and then uh, input dimensions is two, right? We have X and Y and uh, my activation function i'm going to use relu and uh, you need to initialize your kernel i'm going to use he uniform which is very common and uh, the output is going to be uh, three outputs because we have three clusters here okay and the activation function is again try try this is a great piece of code to try different activations for example and see how the output looks like so please try to educate yourself by writing little snippets of code like this or copying little snippets of code like this if you can find it online i'm going to share this with you so you don't have to search for it so now i'm going to do model.compile when i found this snippets of code online they were originally using a stochastic gradient descent with a learning rate of 0 0.01 and momentum of 0 0.9 remember the momentum i talked about in my previous tutorial here you can actually change the momentum and see how uh, things are optimizing okay so that's why i'm leaving this as commented if you want you can change it now where would that go as part of your optimizer here i'm using adam but instead of adam just type opt well obviously remove the quotes but type opt and you're all set okay and since this is uh, a multi-class uh, problem i'm going to use categorical cross entropy okay and the metrics I'm going to track are accuracy. The whole point of this tutorial is just metrics. In this case, I'm just plotting the accuracy. Again, the accuracy needs to improve as the epochs goes by. So let's actually look at that. And uh, let's actually, uh, yeah, I think that should, that should pretty much do. And model.fit is, uh, we are doing it for 100 epochs and let's take a batch size of 32 because we have 1,000 samples, batch size of 32 means 1,000 divided by 32, that many uh, iterations. Again, stay tuned for the next tutorial where I talk about exactly this. And then let's just go ahead and plot the accuracy. Okay, so let's run these lines and see how the output looks like. Okay, there you go, it's done. So now, as you can see, the accuracy was pretty bad and then it started improving, started improving, started improving, and then at about like, for example, 25-ish or so epochs or 30 epochs, now it's flattening out, right? So no matter how much I spend in terms of computing time, I'll probably asymptotically, you know, reach a value of about 83%, you see 82.6% or so. Now you can improve this, you, you know, using more training data or, uh, you know, uh, changing your learning rate, for example, 
uh, and, and all that stuff. This is fun stuff. If you are really trying to learn how the learning rate is going to affect, how momentum is going to affect. So use your, I leave this to you, use stochastic gradient descent or some other function. I mean, even for optimizer, Adam, try to define your learning rates, try to change the default learning rates and see how things perform. Okay, so I hope you learned something again, as usual from this tutorial and please subscribe to this channel. In the next tutorial, let's uh, talk about uh, one more aspect of this, which is uh, batch size and uh, epochs, okay? So thank you very much and let's meet again in the next tutorial.